And I'm still doing shit that'll make somebody call them I know money isn't everything, this but happens if they're lost I'm not a stain on them, clean listen. awesome Living Steve Austin, hit the weed coffin Ironic, I hit the tree like, off But I make paper falling I mean, in my eyes like Daryl Dawkins This and me post a parking, I feel like nobody on it Keeping it a hundred till the day I'm at my funeral Catch me running through the green, I'm trying a high school musical Alright, the microphone closer for this one, man this one might not last too long, because we really only got one focus today. Well, we're going to talk about those two new Drake songs too, but whatever. Let me have some of that gum, bro. Um, good looking. Today, it's all about injustice. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because, I mean... Pertinent to the situation because I mean this this, this is a this is a, a, a relevant conversation due to the mini series that was just released. To when they see us, that's what it's called, right? Make sure I'm no, I'm notorious for messing up names. Mm -hmm. When they see us, about the Central Park Five, five people, five young. Black or Hispanic boys, teenagers at the time, black or Hispanic or men of color or whatever you want to say, arrested, coerced, wrongfully convicted of a um, brutal attempted murder slash rape and assault. Did they give any kidnapping charges? Not to my knowledge, they didn't. I don't think they gave any kidnapping. Due to, due to the, the victim being dragged away, that could have been a kidnapping charge too, but I don't remember I don't remember hearing that in the show. I don't either. I think they just stuck to rape, assault, attempted murder. Those. Hold on one second. Pause this. All right, back to it. So, like we were saying a minute ago, coerced confessions, wrongfully convicted, and, and sentenced from anywhere from, what was it, like 10 to 12 years? Yeah. All the way up to life? Mm hmm In prison, because I know Corey, Corey Wise got life. Yeah. All right. See, number one... In this, you learned that fucking Donald Trump been a scumbag the whole time. Yeah, that that's the part that got me when he was like advocating for these boys to be, um, was what? There's gonna be some background noise today. It's Father's Day in this house. <laughs> yeah, when he was advocating that these these kids be executed, like really, like he bought he spent eighty five thousand dollars on an ad. Yeah. For them to be executed. Was well, advocating that they be executed under questionable circumstances, mm -hmm. uh, right? Advocating and all of a sudden, death penalty. And now he's the president of the United States. Advocating for the death penalty under questionable circumstances, under a case in which the person that was the victim didn't even die. <laughs> yeah, but. It ain't really, we ain't really here to, to lay blame to, because this ain't a case of somebody calling rape. Mm -hmm. This is a case of somebody who was brutalized and the fucking system just did whatever they could do to get a conviction, mm -hmm. right? That's This is what it is. They did whatever they needed to do to get a conviction. So let's get to it. Number one, one thing you can take away, and this ain't no joke. If you somebody of color, right? Mm -hmm. Especially around the fucking police, you should never, you should do your best to never look like that you're running away from something. For real. Period. You should do your best. See, people that's white, they don't have to worry about this shit. If you somebody that's got a tint to your skin, you better do your best to 
to make it to never look like around police that you're running away from something, mm-hmm. right? Because believe it or not, with us, most of the time, like it's guilty until proven innocent, not the other fucking way around. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's that's exactly how it is. Right. Mm-hmm. Nigga, if you if you are fucking in the same color spectrum. As the suspect, you fit the description. Yeah, of course. Like today, I was coming back to... I had went across to my neighborhood to go pick up something. And it was just police over there. Like, just in the neighborhood with the lights on. Like, just over there, bro. And I was like, damn, they just... Like, it's it's police who come around there and just sit. Like, they sit across the street in the food line parking lot. Yeah. And just sit. Waiting, looking, watching. And that shit crazy, bro. So, I mean, a quick rundown of the story or, or the events that happened. If, if somebody ain't familiar with, with what happened in the case, basically a woman was, uh, well, not just her, a bunch of people were being kind of harassed by central young Guys in Central Park on that night. Mm-hmm. But she was assaulted, brutally raped, beaten, and left to die. Which luckily she didn't at that time. I don't know her status today, if she's alive or dead, but from that she didn't. So the police were called, right? And of course, your instinct, everybody scrambled. When you see people running, you run. That's what the instinct of us yeah. is. When, when you see niggas running, you run, All right? Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. Okay? And they started rounding up. They, they caught one one of the guys and he gave the name of Antron of Tron right mm-hmm. that was the the shortest one in the the one the one that got hit in the face with the helmet Kevin mm-hmm. yeah the Kevin Richardson and he gave the name of An- Antron McCray right and it went down from there they, they they formed a little task force the police did with a list of names and they just start pulling people off the street that fit that description, mm-hmm. right? Or fit or had one of those names, obviously. I mean, this is the 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 mini series version of events. It ain't. It's not a documentary, so we going off the mini series version of events. But according to people familiar with the situation, situation is pretty accurate, right? Mm-hmm. So they pull people off the street with those names, arrest them, bring them down for questioning, and they start constructing the story, right? Yeah. Corey Wise, which is a person who wasn't wasn't even on the list of people they were looking for, only accompanied um, Yusuf. Uh, Yusuf. What's his last name? Salam. Okay, Yusuf Salam to the to the precinct, and. He was the one that ended up getting a life sentence. And he won't even on the list. They won't even looking for him. And his name was never brought up. Mm-hmm. All right. So we had Yusef Salam, Corey Wise, Antron McCray, Kevin Richardson, and Raymond, what's his last name? Santana. Okay. Raymond Santana Jr. Those were the ones who ended up, that's the Central Park Five. So, excuse me, you sit there and you proceed to watch, I mean, they put on a great performance in this, in this show, especially the the guy who played Corey, that shit looked believable, like, that shit looked believable. You see, even on his Instagram page, he got up there and was saying like, this was like, the most important role he's ever played because like 
it's, this was a very serious topic, and it was, he was like, it was an honor to play Corey Wise and to meet him and to know about him. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it should be an honor when you portray something to of this magnitude, even though it was a it was a story that happened, you know, back in the late '80s, mm-hmm. and it kind of came to his head. In like 2002, when they were finally exonerated, yeah. But this kind of shit is still happening every day. Yeah, it happens every day, bro. Every day a black man is wrongly accused. Not even, but every day somebody is wrongly accused. Yeah, somebody, somebody, because it ain't just black people that that get wrongly accused. We just get wrongly accused way more than other people. Uh huh. That's what it is. So. I'm just looking at it as, as my before I get into my feelings on every uh, detail of the matter, as to how motherfuckers sleep at night after they do shit like this, and they know they fucking up. Cause they don't gotta live with it. They don't have to spend those nights in prison. They don't have to be looked at. Like I, don't even, you did wrong. I don't even think it's even just that. I think it's just you got a bunch of motherfuckers in law enforcement, not all, but a bunch in law enforcement that main goal is to further their career. And you further your career in law enforcement by putting niggas in jail, mm-hmm. bruh. And especially if you have, uh, solve some high profile shit like this. Allegedly, or so-called solve it. If you saw something like that, and have that on your record, then you got all type of shit. And whether you you can be a district attorney, like, mm-hmm. or something like that, you got aspirations to run for office, senators, and shit like that are made out of this kind of out of prosecuting and and convicting on these type of cases, mm-hmm. right? So that's what it looked like cuz the one of the ladies one of the, the one who prosecuted the case actually she said this ain't about fair or right or wrong this is about politics. Mm-hmm. That's what she said. All right? And another overall I don't care who this offend. If it offend you then fuck it. Another overall thing you can take from this is all cops might be bad, might not be bad, excuse me, but you better never trust not one of them motherfuckers. Not one of them. Yeah. Back to what I was saying. Never, ever trust one of them. If you, and the way I look at it anyway, is if you are black or if you are anything but white, Go into every situation with them motherfuckers assuming that they think the worst of you. Mm-hmm. And that's any cop of any fucking skin color. Because that's how you're going to keep your ass from getting hung up and strung up. Because he was, it was the, it, they had like the good cop, bad cop going on in the interrogation room. They, uh, they have one cop come in there and I'll slap them all in the face. Throw them on the ground, slam them on the table and shit, and then they have that the other cop that came in there and be like, "I can help you. All you gotta do is say this, this, and this, and you can go home." Type shit. I mean, anyway, that's that's a hard cut we just did. Yeah, we back at it. Yeah, that's 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 how a lot of that shit go. Because right? it's about convictions with half these motherfuckers and getting new stripes on their uniforms. Not serving no damn justice, my nigga. Abusing power is what a lot of this shit is about. At least that's the way I look at it, my nigga. I got my own personal experiences with fucking pro- police that's on power trips. My nigga, you pull me over, why is the first fucking thing you asking me, is there something that I ain't supposed to have inside the car? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. But that's nowhere near in the scope of what these dudes had to deal with, what they had to go through. I mean, 
it's, it's to the point where they just took them. They rounded up five people. And they just looked for for what they, well, I think they just found the weakest links. Yeah. I think that's I mean, what they did too. Nigga, you're 14 through 16. They found the weakest links. They found people who didn't know that their parent was supposed to be there before they talked or didn't know that they had to, that they had the right to tell them, I want a lawyer here Mm -hmm. until after the fact, the prosecutor came around telling them you have a right to an attorney after these niggas already got written statements. Mm -hmm. The police, them niggas already got written statements that signed hell the boy Corey Wise, at least as it was portrayed in the show, couldn't even fucking read this statement he was supposed to have written. No, he couldn't. Because when they was in the courtroom, they put that they asked him to read what he said, and he, was, I, I can't read it. All right. So, what was it? How could this shit stand up to a jury? That's the were, thing. They were black. And young, how could this shit stand up to a jury? You see the, you see the, um, the prosecutor, and I believe she, the be fair to her, she fucking uh come came out and denied that any of this shit was true, but I believe every bit of it. Yeah. Like you see her sit standing in the room, they got the narrative, they made up the narrative and then crafted the confessions and evidence around it. Mm-hmm. Right. They had the narrative laid out and then they said, well, we're going to just change these two things around in the timeline to make it look like because the girl, the woman told the other prosecutor, I believe, told her how the fuck could they be here raping somebody and be here beating somebody at the same time. Mm -hmm. She was like, shit, we're going to just switch the order. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. Right. I remember that. That's what she said. Right. And um. They, and then they had like no physical evidence. No physical evidence. No dude. physical they, evidence. And they told uh, the police basically told them boys what to say. Yeah. They told them what to say and and said, you're going to get out mm-hmm. if you just say this. The only one who mom actually came was, wasn't it Yusuf? Yeah, His but she came. got there. It's like she got there right in time. They didn't even know where, the, the, where, the, where um, she didn't even know where he was at. Mm hmm. Uh, she had to hear by word of mouth that he had got arrested. Mm. Right? She didn't know where he was at. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What happens next is that they not only did they coerce the the confessions, they edited them shit. It's like yeah, they edited them to make them even sound better with the narrative that they were laying out. Right? Because I believe it all. I believe all this shit that happened. I don't care what Linda Fun- Funkelstein or whatever the fuck her name is said. What, what's the bitch name? I don't hmm? know. I didn't get her name. Yeah, she. I mean, shit. She out there. Mm-hmm. Linda Fairstein. Fairstein. I, I don't care what she said. Right? And... When it come down to a case like this, like I'm, I'm watching it knowing the outcome, but I'm just looking at the show and if it's portrayed accurately in the show, how the fuck can you, the woman is covered in blood, but her fuck, the, the prosecutor is arguing that none of the blood got on there because they was down by in the her, pelvic yeah. area. Motherfucker, don't you know the pelvic area is connected to the rest of the body? The shit <laughs> on across the way? Bro, see, and that's what got me, man. They didn't have like a single bit of blood on him from on them from that woman. They didn't like, have adequate law law um representation, mm-hmm. like because you know what would have killed this whole case? One single blood spatter expert. Yeah, if the the way she was struck. A blood spatter expert would have come in there and said, if either one of these boys struck her this way, they would have blood on their clothes. Mm-hmm. So why, like, why wasn't those people there though? Like, because you dealing with 
people who couldn't afford to pay for lawyers. You had one person that had a community activist, one person that had a, a, a divorce, a divorce lawyer. court lawyer, yeah, one person that had a legal aid lawyer, mm-hmm. and I don't even remember what the other ones were. But like you, they you, just basically they didn't have a lot of money. And they ain't have the money to pay for no Johnny Cochran type person to come in there and say no shit like what I just said. And this is just something I picked up off of watching them investigation discovery. Mm -hmm. A blood spatter expert would have broke this whole case in half. They had DNA proving that these boys didn't do one inconclusive swab and one swab that didn't match them. And instead of just dropping the case, any DA would have dropped the case. Any prosecutor would have dropped the case if they weren't just hungry for a conviction. If they was really out for justice when the DNA didn't come back, what did they say? That just proves it was another one. Yeah, that just proves it was another one. That just proves there were six of them. And even, and, and even at the end, I mean, uh, the lady was still saying that the, um, well, the person who really did commit it, yeah. she was saying that he was the, he was the sixth one. Yeah, so... Um, that, that case should have been thrown out when the DNA evidence came back inconclusive with one sample and not a match with the other sample. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what should have happened, but it didn't. And they even, they, they had this, the fix was in from this shit from the beginning. They put it with a judge who they knew they could get a conviction with. Yeah. They, They were supposed to pick a random judge. They send it straight to a judge. And even and with the situation with Kevin, you know how he got hit in the face with the um with the helmet by the police officer? Yeah. They how did that go un like why I wonder why he didn't tell that. Because they said they made him say that he got scratched by the woman, but what oh. scratch is gonna make your whole side of your face swell up like that? Yeah, that like if that's how it was happened in real life, but yeah, but, but yeah, God, yeah. I mean, I'm going off what the they had the to, they had to they had to do that. You know why? Because if they do something and they say something like that, that's proving that he was doing what they had him confessing to doing, and they want to tie the wound to her fighting. Yeah, him trying to fight him off. Yeah, but why? I wonder why he didn't just straight up say the police hit me with. They he, he they were straight up. Bro, they was they was coerced. They that's what it was. They the police got tactics where they do that shit. They starve you. They don't let you piss. Mm-hmm. They don't let you go to the bathroom. They don't let you talk to nobody. They just sit there and interrogate you for, for hours. hours. But and, yeah, and can and they can lie. Yeah, they can lie. I was watching a um I was watching another thing on Netflix. It was like a confession tape. Mm-hmm. And they would come in there and they will like they will, like so say if you got a charge, a gun, like you say they try to get you to say you murdered somebody, they'll come in and be like, We got your fingerprints on the you weapon. You know what we should do? What? I think if we we should start pushing for a law that make it illegal for cops to use fucking lies to, com- to, to convict to get a confession. Mm-hmm. We should make Every cop interrogation happened under oath. And if they lie to somebody to try to get a confession out of them, then it's fucking perjury. Yeah. We should try to introduce that to our local lawmakers. You want to? Hell yeah. Let's do it. We should try to introduce that to our local. We should not try. We should just do it. <laughs> I mean, we live right from the fucking place where these niggas meet at. Mm-hmm. We live down the road from them motherfuckers. So, so should, how would we go about doing that? I don't know. Contact the congressman or something. They, that's who. That's who um, makes the laws. Mm-hmm. Makes the fucking make every police interrogation be under performed oath. under oath. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's two sides to that. What if they lying to the right motherfucker? Mm. What if they lying to the person that really deserved to be in jail and without him confessing, they ain't got enough evidence to put him the fuck away? Mm-hmm. What if, but shit, you know, everything got good and bad to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think if they make it under oath, that'll put away to a lot of the... um. Wrongful Wrong. convicts. Yeah. It, it will. It definitely will. But it could also get, let a lot of motherfuckers get away with shit. Mm-hmm. 
Because if you walk up in on, on a nigga who committed a murder and covered it up or got lucky enough there was no witnesses and he was far enough away and he disposed of the weapon. And you never found the weapon, but the only way you know you're going to get him is to, for you to say, I, I got the, the gun. Yeah. Or I got the gun or the, I got the knife or whatever. And that is what cracks that person. Mm -hmm. Then you would technically under our idea be breaking the fucking law. But to put the right criminal away. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it ain't just as easy as. Well, like, shit, that's for the fucking lawmakers to figure out. Not us. <laughs> Nigga, that's why we didn't get voted into the fucking Senate or into the House of Representatives. That's why they got voted in there so they can figure out the ins and outs of this shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could just be a knee jerk reaction to watching this story, but then again, it could just be what might need to happen. Yeah. Because I don't, me personally, I don't think they should be able to lie. Because with you, with you being in an interrogation room for 17 hours without being able to use the bathroom, without eating, without sleeping, without even talking to anybody else. And for them to come in there and say, you did this and you need to confess. And if you confess, you can go home. You're going to say you did it. No, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, not, they, if, they if do you're young enough and you really like, I, I want to go home. Like, I want to go because yeah, like, you believe anything because they, they, they painted the picture as if if they said that they saw it, they would only be used as witnesses. Mm -hmm. And then they once they got what they needed to get and they doctored the tape the way they needed to doctor it to make it be the confession. And they went and wrote and added shit to the damn written statements. And on Corey Wise's part, write the whole statement themselves. And on what well, uh, Kevin Richardson, too, to my he dictated it. Mm -hmm. He didn't write. No, fuck, it's could have been writing anything on that fucking paper. For real. Yeah. So. When you do something like that, <clears throat> I mean, coercion is already against the law, my nigga. but it's hard to prove that shit mm -hmm. because the cop is just going to get up there and say, if he didn't fucking do it, then why would he admit it? That's what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's no arguing. With and when that. you a defendant. I do. It's a reason why defendants, why a lot of motherfuckers is locked up in jail because they so scared of trial that they just take a plea even if they ain't do shit. Mm -hmm. And when you would fucking defend it, my dude, even though this fucking country is supposed to be built upon fair trials, especially if you were a colored skin defendant. My nigga, the, the odds are stacked against you as soon as you get in that motherfucker. Unless you got millions. Yeah. Unless you can pay for the best legal representation around. The odds are stacked against you. All right? So, what I really want to get into is this. In regards to lender, Linda... I can't remember her last name again. Fair Fairstein. Linda Fairstein and Elizabeth Letterer. Why did it take a Netflix series to come out for these two to face any fucking backlash? Hmm? Uh, I wish I could answer that uh, Elizabeth, I, I don't know. Elizabeth lost her book deal because mm -hmm. after that she went on to live a cussy life of being a fucking fiction writer mm -hmm. nigga, I mean she was getting good practice writing fiction when she was fucking putting this case together yeah and Elizabeth Letterer is on is a law professor at the university at, of at Columbia University yeah. you know, not not at not at motherfucking uh, 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 Wake Tech <laughs> Not out here at uh, <clears throat> excuse me, at fucking Podunk State University. That's up in uh, in some strip mall, my nigga, at <laughs> Columbia, a uh, Ivy League fucking school. Mm -hmm. 
a law professor that only had recently stepped down after this came out, but due to protests. Mm hmm. And, uh, and, 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 uh, Linda Fairstein is still out here. The fucking new, uh, what, 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 what was it? The wall street journal got her writing fucking smear pieces mm -hmm. against the, the validity of the, of the events that, the show was claiming took place and they published that bullshit. They published that and put it out for people to read. So she's saying this is fake. How is it fake when these people, they let them go? Like, right, they let them go. And not only did they let them go, they let them go with the proof that another person did it everything that that dude confessed and he provided all the evidence that they needed to tie only him to it mm -hmm. her blood was on him his blood was on her the dna they went all up under his fucking fingernails getting shit out mm -hmm. and all of that the test they tested hair samples all of that how this was resolved back in 2002. How, why did it take a Netflix documentary uh, or not documentary, but kind of like a uh, nonfiction based on a true story miniseries to come out and 17 fucking years later after it was proven that these dudes were innocent. Why in 2019 did these two bitches just face any repercussions mm -hmm. and they're not gonna face a lot honestly i don't think i think that's as bad as all i don't think they're gonna get no prison time if you ask me a wrongful conviction ain't no damn they ain't no prison time what they do when you wrongfully convicted they do what they already did for the central park five they pay you mm -hmm. well they were I mean, if you could call anything lucky in this type of situation, they were lucky enough to get millions of dollars. Some people, one guy in Tennessee got wrongfully convicted and spent about 20 years in prison, and they gave him like a dollar and 50 cent. Damn. After he sued. A dollar and 50 cent. Something of the sort. Something like that. It might have been less. I think it was actually just one dollar they awarded him. Mm -hmm. One motherfucking dollar. So when you, the, your retribution or your or your um not retribution that's but your repayment for the years of your life is just that payment. You sue, you get paid, and that's it. They don't do shit to the motherfuckers that put you in jail wrongly. And I Unless, feel like that. I feel like actually that should be a law. If you wrongfully convict somebody, you should. They do. If you wrongfully convict somebody, in certain ways, they'll put you in jail. Like if you a policeman planting drugs, uh -huh. or if you fabricating evidence. Like if they had no, this, she fabricated evidence with uh, the she with lied the with a story. Oh, but she didn't go fucking plant the DNA on the woman. Oh, yeah. Or something yeah, yeah. like that. that. That ain't what was done. So for her popping off at the mouth and just lying, they ain't gonna do nothing to her. Mm -hmm. Why, why do, why the fuck when, when you saw that this woman wrongfully convicted somebody on, on trumped up charges, that should have never been attributed to these uh, men in the first place because she was there when the fucking con uh, confessions were coerced. Mm -hmm. You saw that. You saw this get resolved in 2002. How did she get a fucking book deal? Why is her book deal still going? She had a book deal already. Yeah. How is her book deal still active? Because she had a book deal in 2002 when the um, other lady met with her at the end. Yeah. How is her book deal still active? How is the other lady, the, the prosecutor who tried the case, how is she getting hired at Columbia University after she went up there and put in wrongfully? She, according to the show, and I believe what the show said, so she fucking doubted every piece of the evidence anyway. 
Mm-hmm. She was questioning it behind the scenes. And you put her in charge of cheat the of teaching people about the law at a so-called prestigious university. And it took for a fucking Netflix miniseries to come out and for some students to protest for her to get booted the fuck out of there. And really, she stepped down. But when, when you in that world, when you in that world, the word step down means somebody told you you got to get the fuck out of here. That's <laughs> what step down means. Uh-huh. She didn't step shit. She got kicked. She got the boot, mm-hmm. my nigga. And that step down shit is a way to clean it up. Make it sound good. Yeah. Motherfucking Rob, um, what's his name? Is it Rob Smith? Rob Smith. He worked at ESPN, right? Mm-hmm. He worked at ESPN. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, right? I'm going I'm to look up this dude name. Rob Parker. Rob Parker worked at ESPN, right? Yeah. Black man worked at ESPN. That nigga got fired from ESPN. You want me to tell you why he got fired? Why? <laughs> this motherfucker got the boot from ESPN for saying RG3 was a corny type of brother and the black community don't doesn't see him as black enough. That nigga was out the next day mm-hmm. just for saying that. But this white lady who put five teenagers of color behind bars for a rape for years of their life got hired at Columbia University. To be a fucking law professor when this other man, I'm talking about this is real life shit. Rob Parker got booted out of a joke of a company. ESPN itself ain't a joke of a company in its field, but it's they talk about fucking sports. Sports ain't important to life. Yeah. ESPN is a network built around fucking games. They threw him out the door the next day just for saying RG3 was corny and he ain't black enough. Mm-hmm. And he like white girls. That's what this dude said. <clears throat> Nigga was fucking fired. And this woman got a job at Brown University. Uh, not Brown. That's another Ivy League school. At Columbia, Columbia. University practice, teaching fucking law. My nigga, this ain't how to get away with murder. What a professor can can do all type of fucked up shit and keep her job. This ain't that, nigga. Not to mention Rob Parker went to Columbia University. I mean, I didn't even know that. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know that shit. (laughs) Which is crazy. Yeah, but I'm just saying. How the fuck a company such as ESPN acting faster on bullshit that's meaningless than publishing companies and prestigious, so-called prestigious universities acting on people who were proven to be wrongly accused. No, proven, not proven to be wrongly accused. Proven to be so hungry for a fucking conviction that they put, that they crafted a fucking story out of thin air. As long as it could get niggas locked up, that's all they cared about. Mm -hmm. The prosecutor said it's about politics. The, 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 the boys were referred to as fucking animals. You think I don't believe? I believe with all of my fucking soul that those white people was in there calling them dudes animals. Of course. I believe that too. Honestly, everything that was in that documentary, I definitely believe 100%. So, and on a documentary. I mean, in the, in, the, in the miniseries. Yeah. 
A bio series. That's what it was. <clears throat> this shit ain't a uh, a fucking joke. You get up on one of these stupid ass TV stations and say the wrong thing, your ass is gone. You get up on ESPN and just talk politics, your ass is gone. Ask Jamel Hill. Mm -hmm. She the fuck out the door just because she wouldn't stop tweeting about Donald Trump. That's the reason Jamel Hill got the boot. You feel me? Just because she wouldn't stop tweeting about Donald Trump. But it took all the way 17 years after these bitches was proven that they tra- these motherfuckers got able to retire and go on to make money doing other shit. Mm-hmm. Being a true, uh, being a crime author, writing novels and shit, getting published, and being a fucking law professor. And they ain't have to worry about if they was going to ever be free again. Like the people who they just callously threw behind bars for some shit that they had to craft the evidence around. Shit, I should DM this shit to Linda Fairstein and Elizabeth Letterer. And to have the fucking nerve to still sit up here saying, trying to trying to justify your fucking actions. To want justice for the woman, anybody should want justice for that woman who got attacked. Nigga, you don't serve justice by serving injustice to somebody else. That is true. But that's just idealism. That's not the reality. Because you these motherfuckers, they ain't serving justice for a lot of them. They just on, some of them is on a power trip. And some of them is just serving themselves. <laughs> You got niggas, you got uh, uh, beat cops that want to be detectives. Mm -hmm. How the fuck they going to become a detective if they ain't putting niggas in jail? How? But you you can't detect shit according to probably your criteria of your job if you ain't arresting and and getting niggas locked the fuck up. You got detectives that want to be fucking chief of police. How they going to be chief of police if they ain't out here allegedly solving cases? You got motherfucking prosecutors that want to be the DA. How you going to be the DA if you ain't getting convictions? Mm -hmm. What? Nigga, you ain't. And this this is no longer just specific to the fucking show. This is real life I'm talking about, which that what happened to them is real life. But this is other situation. This shit is happening all over the place. And motherfuckers got the nerve to sit up there and tell you to trust the justice system. Motherfucker for what? It ain't built for me. Nigga, just a couple hundred years ago, motherfucker, the justice system wasn't built for people that look like me and let alone... People that look like me won't even consider fucking people. We was considered three fourths mm-hmm. of a person, bitch. Yeah. Or three fifths, I think, of a yeah, person. Yeah, three fifths. Not even three fourths. I gave us too much fucking credit. <laughs> you understand three me? Three fifths of a man, I believe, is the phrase. That's the joint. Um, man, fuck what Jay Z talking, talking about. about. That shit was in the damn. The shit that these people hold up. The shit that they hold up to be the fucking foundation of this country is what that ain't talking about no rap lyric. This shit was in the damn constitution. Mm -hmm. That's where this shit was at. Fuck what a nigga's getting behind a microphone and a beat and talking about. This shit was in the constitution. Them niggas drafted this country up. On that fucking principle. When it was legal to own niggas. To 
justice system won't built for me to trust, motherfucker. That's why I never will trust it. That's why when I get pulled over, the car is illuminated. Mm-hmm. Nigga, I light that bitch up. Nigga. So you don't even got the opportunity to think that I'm doing something that's outside the norm mm-hmm. when your ass is approaching me with your fucking flashlight out. Shit, niggas is out there. The, the man, the boy went downtown just to keep his friend company. He won't even on the list, and he ended up with the harshest sentence. Yeah. Why? <laughs> That shouldn't have been no fucking list. These braggity bum ass NYPD officers mm. should have just went and did their fucking jobs and detected some shit. But most of these motherfuckers don't detect nothing anyway. They just get somebody in there to confess and that's how they get these convictions. These motherfuckers either get somebody in there to confess or get somebody in there to take a plea. They ain't out here solving shit the way they may have you think. For every high profile case you hear about taking place, it's a million other ones that you don't know shit about. Now these niggas is so called solving the case when they just getting somebody, whether the person is innocent or guilty, to get in there and tell them they did it and they closed the book on that shit. And then, like, the, the, you know how the justice system, you know how fucked up the justice system is? Yeah. Right? Listen at this. Listen at this, right? Say you get locked the fuck up. You know you didn't do it, but they done trumped up a charge or something. Or they done, they done pointed every finger at you and it's looking like that your ass is going to go to jail forever if you take it to trial Mm -hmm. right and they say all right you know you take this to trial you get in life but if you take this 10 years right here you still see the light of day one day you know you ain't do shit right Mm -hmm. you take the fucking deal you plea guess what you can't do now can't can't fucking appeal it yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you can't appeal a fucking plea. <laughs> you want niggas see, to, to trust that? When I was watching this this mini series, I was sitting thinking to myself, what I what what I have taken, what they were saying, and just said I did it to go home, or what I have actually tried to fight it in really say what happened the thing about it is this they they do that because you know they do what they do they do that right there because they know a lot of people don't know this right Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know this my nigga if the police take you in for questioning and you ain't under arrest you can get up and walk the fuck out you Mm -hmm. don't have to answer shit you Mm -hmm. can just leave if they, they do take the, you in for questioning. Yeah, if they take you in for questioning. You can say "fuck you." I ain't answering no questions. If I'm not under arrest, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. That's what you can do. And can they place you under arrest right there? They can if they if they didn't place you under arrest in uh, uh, under arrest in the beginning. It's because they don't got enough to place you under arrest with. Mm-hmm. They get you in there trying to get something out of you. So they can place you under arrest. But people don't know that unless they say you under arrest and you got the right, right to, to remain, remain silent, silent and shit, that they really, they, they just get you in there and you think because it's the damn police that you got to do what they say. Mm-hmm. No. you They get you under there. They ain't read you no Miranda rights and they ain't told you you was under arrest. You can tell them, fuck you and go. Mm-hmm. That's what you can do. You ain't got to answer shit. Hey, them boys. But was, just think about. They that. was 14 you know that through 16. You, they didn't know that. You Even in today, you not going. Who's going to do that? Especially being black. Like, oh, who's people, just going to really be like. Who, people who know to do it will do it. Mm-hmm. 
but a lot of people don't know to do it. People who know to do it will do it. Mm-hmm. I tell I tell you, this is what happened to me right down my fucking front yard. This is what I say. People who know to do it will do it. Mm-hmm. Right in my front yard, the police were called on somebody in my neighborhood. The person that the police were called on fled the scene as soon as he sniffed the damn cops. Mm-hmm. He left. Left me and my cousin and our other friend out there. Our other friend got handcuffed. Mm-hmm. He was under arrest. Me and my cousin, we walked away from the curb and sat on our porch and the cop approached us. Like, How did, why you walk away? What you walk away for? Said, I, what'd you, what you, we got a call about some people on the corner doing this and that. I said, you ain't get no call about us. And I was about, I was about what, 17 when this happened? Mm-hmm. 18 maybe. And he was like, well, what you walk away for? I said, I'm at my house. I was, I was standing in my yard when you pulled up and I'm in my yard now. So, you know, we could get you for resisting arrest. I said, I ain't under arrest though. Mm-hmm. I ain't been told I was under arrest, so you're going to get me for resisting the arrest that you ain't putting me under? Mm-hmm. And that nigga walked the fuck off. <laughs> That's what happened. Right there on my porch. Let our other friend out talking about mistaken identity. Mm-hmm. So basically, they was just trying to get y'all under some shit. And they was trying to... They was... Man, they they was trying to they were they were just trying to they were trying to catch somebody and that man they knew who the fuck they was down here looking for because that wouldn't have been that ain't his first run in with them same dudes mm-hmm. they knew that they wasn't looking for us they knew it. But that's just how the fucking police are, man. They they try to intimidate. They really was probably gonna try to intimidate us into giving up where the person they was really looking for was at. Yeah, but y'all didn't. And we didn't. I didn't tell them motherfuckers nothing, but that I ain't under no arrest. That's all I told them. Which was the right thing. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> this is the this this show is just a, a look into what I believe and what is happening in precincts all around the country. Sorry, sorry to say it, police, but those type of motherfuckers make make people in our community like not like none of you niggas. And not trust none of you. Right. So all I want to do is just say a big fuck you to everybody who was involved in the case, who was prosecuting it, who was investigating it and prosecuting it because you knew you didn't have shit and you went into the fucking precinct and created shit. Mm hmm coerced even fucking the boy's dad threatened the nigga's job yeah <laughs> like and that was with Antron yeah had him in there telling his son to go along with y'all bullshit version of events to keep his job mhm it's just crazy what police would do to get a conviction It ain't that's crazy, but it's just fucking life. It's just why you and me and anybody who looked like us, anybody who looked like any like they might have any relation to us, better never trust them motherfuckers. I don't. I do everything I can to stay out their way and have them stay out of mine. Mm-hmm. That's Same. what I do. I don't even put myself in a situation where the police can even get close enough to talk to me. So. 
That shit is just crazy. Yeah, it is, man. But at least at the end, they did. They had to give up big chunks of their lives, but they did get justice. They got this shit wiped off of their name. And their story can be used to highlight the injustices that's happening to people all over the country of any color. Because shit, white people get wrongfully convicted too. Yeah. So, man, we just went on for an hour about that. But I, I just don't, I can't stand that type of shit. I can't, and I don't use that type of, that type of thing to make me rail off against people that are white. Like, I, I use that type of thing to make me rail off against the fucking justice system because there ain't really no justice out here like that. As Richard Pryor said, it's no justice, just us. <laughs> Corey, Corey Wise got a life sentence for something he didn't do. The motherfucker who killed my uncle got 10 years. That motherfucker is walking around free right now. He just lucky he ain't never bumped into me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Killed him. That motherfucker got 10 years and is back out. My nigga. Now that nigga been out. So that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So do you wanna really talk about these sorry ass Drake songs? I Matter don't. Fact, I was just about to go say. Go ahead, no, 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 talk talk about them. I'm not gonna talk about them. Me uh, personally, I don't even want to talk about They're shit. Anymore. That's my opinion. <laughs> I like the songs. I like both of the songs. I think they're really good songs, but listen, I can't listen to two songs by Drake. I need an album. It's, Drake is not one of those artists where I can go and listen to a single by Drake because then it's only going to make me want to hear more new music by him. So, I don't, the songs were good. I, I like the... I like the. Um, I can get you in contact with a support group. I can get you some help. <laughs> can get you in contact with a psychologist if you need me to. Anything that can fucking free you from the mental stranglehold that this shit ass fucking artist must have on you. Because if you hear a, this shit and say, I want a whole album full of this shit, I don't know what I, I can't do nothing for you, man. Nah, I, I, I like Drake though. I fucks with Drake, so. It wouldn't be nothing. I don't for me care to get who album. made these two shits. <laughs> if my favorite artist made these two shits, I wouldn't be saying I need to hear a whole album full of that from them. I'm ready for Drake's album. I'm ready for Lil Nas X album. Jesus Christ, you do need help, bro. Lil Nas X is a great artist. I don't nigga, know. I I can't. A great understand. artist. He a nigga, that nigga great got music. fucking lucky. He got a meme song. He got a song that was a meme and then the shit blew up because the country music chart discriminated against him. That song is fucking garbage. Old Town Roll is dog shit. Nigga, I thought it was a joke. Nigga, I thought Old Town Roll was a parody. I didn't know that nigga was serious. The song is good. Shit is trash. The song is good. My nigga. The song is good. It's no, it's no way around it. It is a way around it. It's, it's no Motherfucking, amount, you it's, can, I'd rather go listen, just, if I want to listen to something like that, I'd rather just go listen to like fucking Willie Nelson or Kenny Rogers. Niggas who actually talented at making country music. It's the most, he, it's like he threw a bunch of shit about cowboys in a hat picked it all out and just laid it on the table in random order and recited it over a beat. I got my horses in the back. What the fuck is you talking about? That ain't got nothing to do with shit. A Ferrari. That ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> he talking to that nigga. He, I got my horses in the back. A Ferrari. Nigga, why would he say something disparaging against Porsche in the next sentence? The symbol of the Porsche is a horse, and the engine is in the back of that, too. It's all in the song, I guess. The song, I I like Lil Nas X, and I like Drake. Are you talking about that <laughs> fucking Ferrari? 
I believe that's what he was talking about. I got my horses in the back. I think Look at the horses a, is in the back of your Lamborghini. That's what I'm saying. I think he's talking about a fancy car. Like a fancy sports car. I'm riding on my horse. You can whip your Porsche. He ain't talking about a car. Yeah, he switched it. I'm riding on my horse. He didn't say in it. He switched it. I'm riding on... You can whip your Porsche. I've been in the valley. You ain't been up off the porch. Like, it's it's, it's just rhyme and sequence. But he didn't have... On doesn't rhyme with shit that's in the sentence. He could have said, I'm riding in my horse. You can rip whip your Porsche. I don't know. The shit, and I'm the riding song is on my good. horse. He, he, I can I can listen to that song on repeat. The shit, the is, shit is complete, utter, and total fuck. <laughs> That's what that shit is. That song is great. I mean, for the success, I'm completely on board with him being successful with it. Mm-hmm. Shit. But the merits of it as a song, that shit is fucking terrible. You only saying this about a sports car because of Billy Ray Cyrus part. Be no, for real. I'm, I'm not. I honestly and think nobody horses was talking in the back means he was driving a sports car. And I think why he would he say it the next? Say, same reason why any rapper says anything. Just to fucking say it. It's yeah, a song. I'm saying I'm riding on my. But the song is about something, and it ain't about cars. He just went, the next sentence he said was about not being in a car. So why would he be just be talking about being in one two words earlier? Why Why else would horses be in the back, though? Nigga, what, what do you mean? You just take the motherfucker up and tie it up around the back of something. <laughs> That's what you do. People actually do ride horses to places. It is actual <laughs> real places and restaurants and shit. Wait, you know that shit from back in the wild. Yeah, I know, I know what you're talking it about. It is that thing still exists. You can ride your horse somewhere and tie it up in the back of the establishment and have that motherfucker waiting for you out there when you come back out. All right. Nigga, I don't give a fuck what some fan put on Genius. <laughs> Bro, the song is... Like, it's no not saying that song is good. I'm saying the song ain't good. That, that shit is terrible. Nigga, that shit is fucking awful. But again, if it weren't for a meme and discrimination, nobody would even know it. I think they would. If it weren't for that, this song would have still blew up. How? Cause what if you had he he was already blowing up on SoundCloud. If you had to, if this, his song "Carry On" blue was blowing up on SoundCloud already. This, he had was over, it blowing was it blowing up on SoundCloud or did it blow up on SoundCloud when this shit blew? He up? already had he already had people listening to his music. It, it won't like this was his first hit song. But it, but he what, already had that's, people that's listening. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Section 80 sold like 20,000 copies and then went gold after Good Kid Mad City come out. So which one of them shits came first? Did, did the shit blow up on SoundCloud and was he already buzzing or did Old Town Road smash out of nowhere and then people went back to listen to old shit? Good kid, he man. Might, he, they they probably went because back and listened to Section it. Section eighty, but was under no fifty thousand copies. It's until no good doubt kid in that Lil Nas's X shit ain't great. The music is good. This nigga makes great music. That nigga make dog shit. He makes good music. I I, I don't know. Nigga, man, is that old town road shit one of the worst fucking songs now, I this, ever heard in my life? Is this just biased because you don't like country music? No. That ain't biased because I don't like country music. It's biased because I don't like shitty music. This song is great. I don't I like... can, what is what is not to like about this song? It's catchy, great beat. Like no, the beat is the number one thing I don't like about it. Some fucking stereotypical fucking uh, banjo or something, <laughs> nigga. Newsflash. Whack ass B.O.B. already did that type of beat better on his song. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. It's way better than this shit. And that's from B.O.B. Somebody that's trash. (laughs) 
I, I can't lie to you. This nigga Lil Nas X is about to be the next version of him. Nah, I doubt that. But I'm going to still wait. I don't know how many fucking times. How many times am I going to have to be right about these shitty ass artists before niggas start believing me? I had the same argument with a nigga five years ago about Chief Keith. <laughs> me personally, I don't think Chief Keith was a great rapper. Oh, the same shit that you saying about Lil Nas X is the same shit this nigga was saying about what? Chief saying Keith. that he makes good music. I mean, he make good shit. He make his shit is going. He his shit is his shit blew up and he gonna be relevant in the mainstream. And I said, nigga, I guarantee your ass. Not his fan base that he cultivated is one thing, but I, I said I guarantee you, in two years. Nobody will care about Chief Keith. I, in two years, nobody's probably going to care about Lil Nas X, but that still doesn't take away from the fact that he makes great music. He made a great song. No, if you make great, towns, if you make great music, <coughs> niggas is still going to care about it in two years. Nigga. It's a reason why fucking Drake, as much as I might not like his shit, been on top of shit since 2008. Because mm -hmm. he don't make shit like that. Right there. Bro, Old Town Road is good. That shit, I, I, Old I Town know. Road is a fucking gimmick. What is going to happen when the gimmick is gone? It's a gimmick. It only, this nigga only, the shit only got popular because it's a parody of a country song. Or that's what it sounded like. So you telling me nothing else on this whole album is going to be good? Nigga, I'm telling you right now that nothing else I've heard from this nigga is good. So you gonna tell me when I played Carry On, you didn't say it was hot? No, Carry On had a hot beat. So you saying it's, it won't hot? You saying I mean, the beat was hot? The song I won't think hot? That he ain't fucking good. So you telling me Carry On not good? I heard the song fucking twice. Mm -hmm. It got the hot beat. It got the. the so you the telling same, me it's not good? The same melody from Brothers Johnson, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's the extent of what I like about it. Okay. So you're telling me you it's not good. I'm telling you, since you played it, I haven't listened to it again. So, so it's you not tell good. me what the fuck that means. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the name of the shit. I got fucking internet. I got Wi-Fi. I got Verizon Wireless. And I got SoundCloud. And I got the ability to type. I could have listened to it a million more times since then. Guess what? Since you played it, I haven't heard it. That's what I'm telling you. I still think Lil Nas X makes good music, and I'm ready for the album when it comes out on the 21st, and I'm going to listen to it, because I, I really think that shit's going to slap. I mean, I'm not above being fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. you know? If the shit is good, it come out, and I think it's good, I'll say it. Mm -hmm. As of right now, my nigga, the track record, I mean, it's like somebody just stepped in shit and they've been fucking marking up your brand new white carpet with <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> for weeks. I said, I don't give a fuck what nobody think about it either. Oh, shit, man, you can't be. I can't. I can't sit up. Can't sit up here and just have any fucking thing be classified as good. Nigga, a lot of shit is catchy. Nigga, do you like baby shark? Do, 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 do. That's catchy, nigga. Is that? Uh, yeah. Is that you shit's fucking good. running around bumping that shit? Yeah. Get out of here, Especially man. at camp. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out that camp because you out there with fucking seven-year-olds. Exactly. My nigga. That if... This is... This is why I like Lil Nas X, right? I ain't saying you shouldn't like him. I'm just stating my opinion. So you you don't think the nigga is good at all? That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting. I don't. Bro, I don't think the nigga got good shit out. I mean, the nigga only really got. He has only one mainstream song. And that's what I'm judging like off of. I'm judging off of that. I can't judge off of, but what's there? Again, this is a song that I can't stand. Mm hmm. Well, I like the song. That shit's fire to me. And the two Drake songs, I'm ready to hear what it, whatever I mean, else. Them that shits nigga is got. better than the, the Old Town Road. They there. I can give Drake that much. Mm -hmm. NBA champion Drake, because apparently he plays on the team or something. <laughs> Fuck out of here. 
Niggas out here with the hat on and shit. He did. He did this have is, the hat. How did it feel to win the championship, Drake? This is poetic. It's, <laughs> nigga, what are you talking about? You didn't win shit. <laughs> Your damn Steph Curry tattoo. Hey, Kevin Durant. But wow, well, speaking of sports, while well, we already talk about sports, how, how you feel like the Lakers gonna do? They got AD, Kuz, LeBron. And why you be putting keep putting Kyle Kuzma in that sentence, nigga? Cause bro, Kyle Kuzma is he's he's. I feel like he's gonna do something. I feel do like he's under, really gonna under, be good. Do you understand that you just? Fucking listed Cal Kuzma in the same sentence with one of the like top three best fucking players of all time. Like, do you understand that? Do you understand that you listed Cal Kuzma in the sentence with LeBron? Yes. That's I fucking feel like, ludicrous. <laughs> I <laughs> feel like when LeBron leaves, he's gonna he's nigga, gonna be the when shit. When LeBron leaves, my nigga. When LeBron leaves, look. LeBron left Miami, nigga. Le- Miami still had one of the greatest players ever on the roster. Mm-hmm. They went from being fucking in the finals every year, my nigga, to being the fourth seed. Mm-hmm. I- I'm listening. Kyle Kuzma, yeah. He might be okay, my nigga. That's LeBron. That's- I feel like you Kyle list Kuzma with- just needs time to grow as an NBA player. My nigga, when... This is the thing about the NBA, bro. <clears throat> More than any other sport. Niggas don't need time to grow. Mm-hmm. Bro. When the nigga is raw, they come into the league wrecking shit. Yeah. Bro. The Miami Heat went from fucking a team that you barely have ever heard of to in the playoffs. To in the playoffs? To winning a fucking series in the playoffs? To go into the Eastern Conference Finals. To being champions within three damn seasons of drafting D-Wade. Within three seasons, them niggas had won a championship. And that nigga had the best finals performance since Jordan. That nigga averaged like 35 a game in the finals. Mm. The Cavaliers went from winning like 12 games to winning like 37 games to being in the NBA Finals within four seasons of LeBron being there, bro. Period. Mm -hmm. The Lakers went from fucking pissed to shit. (laughs) Kuzma and Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram and all of them damn mediocre players on the damn team. What are you talking about? I still think Kyle Kuzma is. I ain't saying he bad. I'm saying he don't. You don't list him. Yeah, so you just you in the list. He, like, he he get, him, get him out the list. The list of what? Like, like putting him up there with LeBron and stuff. Yeah, like and, and even Anthony. I Davis. only put him on the same shit because they on the same team. But you like that's, that's gonna a, be the three on, on that on, team on, getting buckets. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's like saying like say when Golden State signed Kevin Durant. Yeah. Right. Right. That's like saying, yeah, man, Golden State, man, they got motherfucking Steph Curry, JaVale McGee. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> what? <laughs> one of these things are not the same. Like, uh, one of these don't belong here. Niggas like, what? No, he couldn't have. Like, you got certain players who develop, like, the one big shining example that you can say of players who developed kind of later on, really it was because of injury. But really, you can't even say they developed later on. Was It's the Warriors. Steph Curry had bad ankles. Yeah. But what did Mark Jackson say within a couple years of drafting him and Klay Thompson? Boy. I thought he was out of his mother scooting mind when he said this junk. <laughs> that nigga said, I got the best shooting backcourt of all time. Yeah. Mark Jackson. You know, Mark Jackson built this team. Steve fucking Kerr just came and coasted the victories with it. Mm-hmm. But Mark Jackson had them niggas go from being a laughing stock to winning 55 games. <laughs> 
when Steph Curry ankles became made of something other than fucking Walmart brand paper towels. <laughs> That nigga got some bounty finally and them shits could withstand some liquid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that nigga ankle got some bounty. Now they can withstand some liquid. <laughs> he relegated this nigga's ankles to <laughs> quicker picker uppers, nigga. <laughs> I'll never go forget that shit now. I'm, I, I'm gonna look at Stephen Curry play, and all I'm gonna see is paper towels around this nigga's feet, nigga. Quilted quickly. He relegated this nigga to fucking quicker picker uppers, nigga. But. But then, like, like, in basketball, nigga, when you know, you know. Bro, like when they get in the NBA, even if they don't have a crazy first season, like D Wade first season, he averaged sixteen. I think LeBron averaged like nineteen in his first season. Mm-hmm. But when when you watch them dudes play basketball, you was like, oh yeah, they belong here. <laughs> when you watch these niggas play basketball, bro, you like, oh shit. When you watch Jordan play basketball, you was like, yeah, but you go back and watch some of those 19. That nigga was a rookie, had them in the playoffs. He put 63 on Larry Bird like, in the playoffs <laughs> as a rookie, my nigga. I don't know. I ain't saying, like, we, we, we ain't talking about being a good player. I'm talking about you listing that nigga with one of the best players fucking ever. Mm-hmm. No matter what you like about LeBron or don't like, or how many times that nigga lost in the finals, that nigga's the black Jerry West. Uh, you can't say shit, nigga. Look, let me just give you the perfect example, my nigga. The Lakers. Like I said, I just called LeBron the black Jerry West. You want me to tell you why? Why? The Lakers. You know what? Guess what their record was in the final. Guess what Jerry West with the, with the Lakers. Guess what his record in the finals was. Jerry West, that nigga is the logo of the NBA. Yeah. Guess what his record was in the finals. What? Guess. Nigga, I'll, give you hey. a, I'll give you a clue. That nigga was the MVP of a finals that he lost. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. The MVP of a finals that he lost. Yeah, Jerry West was the finals MVP in a series in a finals that the Lakers didn't even win. Guess what his record in the finals was? He man. only lost one then, right? No. He only won one. Nigga, he was one and nine in the finals. Damn. He only won one. Magic Johnson got there. Them niggas won five. <laughs> he got that as a rookie. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar got hurt, and Magic Johnson played center, mm-hmm. and they won. Nigga, he won. Magic Johnson won the college championship and the NBA championship in the same fucking year. Damn. <laughs> like, that's you talking about Kyle Kuzma being in that class when you list him next to LeBron. My nigga, like, yeah, that's not what you do. <laughs> Who's LeBron? What? He don't even said his name first. <laughs> LeBron's like, like, I don't know. I just feel like them niggas gonna do something. They probably, I mean, they gotta be better than they were. That's what they gotta be. But I don't know, man. Bruh, I don't think they could put a team together <clears throat> to tell you the truth. This team is this constant as it's constituted now. I don't think they could beat the Warriors if just Clay come back. What with and all the them? Warriors are fucking Friday ass. If just Clay is back, mm. you understand me? I think they could beat the Rockets ass. Though. Like the Rockets is trash. <laughs> I think they could beat the Warriors. It depend. Well, I would have to see the team after all of the trades come in. Right. I don't think they could beat the Warriors if just Clay is back. If they get, if they get Jimmy Butler, then I think they will be able to. Cause day and day I have somebody who can shoot. Jimmy Butler can't shoot. I mean, he is. It's different than being able to shoot or just making shots because you shoot a lot. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's two different things. Steph Curry can shoot. 
Klay Thompson can shoot. Jimmy Butler is an average shooter. Mm-hmm. But he was on teams for the most part where he had to do all the shooting. Yeah. I mean, toilet paper need Derrick Rose was on his team and he was out for most of the time. Like, toilet paper need. <laughs> so, that's what happens with, with that. I think that's what they need, though. They need a shooter. So, who who's going to run point? LeBron runs point on every team he plays on. That's who. Yes, that's, that's who. It is for. true. <clears throat> so now, shooting guard. I mean, Kyle Kuzma ain't he a shooting guard? I don't know. I mean, I thought it was a small forward. All of that shit don't even matter no more, bro. They don't play positions like that. They give the ball to the best nigga and they just fucking move. <laughs> the offense of the Warriors do most of the time running through Draymond Green. He, that nigga is the one out there getting the most assists on the team. Mm-hmm. So like they don't that shit don't matter, man. That position basketball like basically they assign you positions. Like Steph Curry is only a point guard because he's fucking short. Yeah, and like that's why he's called a point guard. Because that nigga's he's six three instead of being six eight. <clears throat> right, right now like that the, the the basketball positions you just call what you are according to your height. Mm-hmm. And, but really, those positions don't mean shit no more. Yeah, because right. you can get fucking Giannis out there running point. Hey, Giannis is six eleven, bro. That nigga, Kevin Durant can be a point. Yeah, guard. he can be that a point nigga guard. Is like seven two. No, it's no, bro. I hate when they list him as like six eleven, bro. It's no way. Bro, he the same height as he taller than than Demarcus Cousins. Yeah, niggas was standing next to each other. And he was taller, like. Yeah, but it don't matter. I mean, I, and he listed as a, he a small forward on top of that. A 6'11 small fuck. <laughs> Get out of here. But anyway, man, I done lost my voice going on that rant. Uh, you got anything else, man? Nah, I, I don't. I don't know. We can end this shit, then. Let's end it on that, <laughs> that note right there. Nah, bro. they were the same height. DeMarcus Cousins is like seven feet fucking tall. Bro. <laughs> they had Kevin Durant one time listed at like six nine. Bro. Yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> yeah, I remember that. Unless this nigga's hitting like, <laughs> this nigga's getting knee in plants. <laughs> like on South Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might. That nigga. Because him and DeMarcus Cousins is the same height. Uh-huh. Well, well, Demarcus Cousins is six eleven. So, I don't know. I think all I think all of those are lies, though. I don't know, man. Ain't ain't no telling. But if you ain't got nothing else to say, I ain't got nothing else to say. I don't. I don't did enough yelling for the day, man. Well, until next time, folks. All right. <laughs>